Good evening, everyone. How the fuck are you guys doing? I'm doing pretty goddamn good, and I'm going to be doing a hopefully fairly quick video reply to the reprieve tonight. Um, as always, pertinent videos in the Sarahan bar below. Watch these videos because there is a shitload of content between the two of them. And before my commentary makes any sense at all, you're going to need to know exactly what I'm referring to. So I have a look at those videos. Um, I'm going to assume you did that. Now you're back. Good job. And here I go. To the reprieve. Um, the first thing I want to say to you, in the video that I'm responding to now, which was a reply to Godless Hayes, the first thing that you try to make clear to Hayes is that you weren't making any positive claims in your comments. The comments you left about, well, what if God got involved, they were simply what ifs, right? They weren't positive assertions. They weren't statements. They were just, you were just throwing out a suggestion. Now, I'm sure you know what that means, right? We call that an implication. You were implying something. Now, none of us really think that you were stating for a fact that, like, you knew that your God got involved and that's why this happened. I don't think anybody took it the way you thought they did. So what I'm going to do is I I'm going to attempt to explain to you why you why you got the surprised reaction, right? Why everybody was so thrown off by, by those what you call what-if statements, right? Because it's, a, it's an implication, and it's a very fucking bizarre implication to throw out there, right? I'll give you an example. We see a car blow up. The two of us, we're sitting together. We look up. A car explodes. And just before the car explodes, two guys hop out of the fucking car. Right? One out of the driver's side, one out of the passenger side, and as soon as they tuck and roll, the motherfucker explodes. Okay? And I go, holy shit, did you see that? And you go, yeah, I did. And I go, Jesus fucking Christ, I can't believe they got out of that fucking car that quick. And, and wow, they must have known that it was going to blow up. And you go, well, maybe God got involved. You never know. I'm going to give you a look like you're fucking nuts. And the reason I'm going to do that is because that's a very odd implication to make at that time. Given what we know about the situation, which is what we saw from our perspective, given what we know about it, the more rational explanation is that they knew that some, maybe the car was on fire. Maybe they knew that. They heard an odd noise. They heard a pop, pop, and a spark, and then they ran. They got out. That's, that's the logical conclusion to draw. But the first thing you say is, well, maybe God got involved. So you get a funny look. And maybe I go, what the fuck are you talking about? Why would you jump to that conclusion? Now, those are with situations that we can explain, right? Situations that have a rational explanation, like a gun jamming in the clip you played. Like that was an example of a miracle. No, no, it wasn't. That's something that can also be explained. But then, I saw in your comment section, you had said to someone else, well, what about things we, we cannot explain? What about things that there, we can't really make sense of? And I say, well, maybe God got involved. Would that still, would that, under those circumstances, would that be an outlandish implication to make? Yes, it would still be an outlandish implication to make. The reason is we might not be able to explain it, but based on that alone, our lack of understanding is enough for you, really, to immediately make the implication that not just any god, not one or two gods, not some unknown supernatural force, but the god you worship might have gotten involved. It's still bizarre to jump straight to that conclusion and make that particular implication. Still very strange. Now, the way you explain the reaction that you got from people like Godless Hayes is that they suffer this whole problem of evil thing, right? They don't understand how a loving God could let bad things happen to good people. And, and um, yeah, now, now you ask Hayes, are you feeling me or whatever? And he said, no, that, that's not my problem. But that is my problem. That is my problem. I have what you call this problem of evil. I've got it. I've got a big fucking problem 
with it. Now you you say to Hayes, you go, well, well, cite in the Bible where God says life is going to be easy, everything's going to be hunky dory, bad things are never going to happen, and on and on and on. And you're right about that. You're right. There is no verse in the Bible where God says that. As a matter of fact, the God character in the in the uh, in the Old Testament, especially, is written like a whiny fucking tyrant, a a, a powerful self-absorbed fucking disgusting goddamn son of a bitch bastard fucking tyrant that's exactly how this character is written and this isn't someone that this isn't a character that that people should be looking up to and, and paying respect to this is a fucking bloodthirsty just self-absorbed selfish fucking tyrant and there's all this bullshit about how and I'm going to get to that in a minute. Jesus Christ comes into the picture. And that was such a big fucking sacrifice on God's part. Wow. I can't believe it. But I, but I do have a problem with the way that your God is sold to people in general. Your God is sold in churches all across the country as a loving God. God does all this. God allows all this because he loves his creation. Right? This is how your God is marketed to people all over the United States, and you goddamn well know it, Reprieve. You know it. Okay? Now, if we're going to talk Scripture, you might say, well, where in Scripture does it say there's a, a, that God is loving? Well, I looked for about five fucking seconds and came up with the following verses. Um, first, we have John chapter 3, verse 16, very popular, popular verse, you know. For God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son. You've read it before, I'm sure, so you know what I'm talking about there. It, it's all about how God loves us. Therefore, he made this so-called sacrifice, which, when you think about it, wasn't much of a sacrifice at all. Because you can't compare a sacrifice that an all-powerful God makes to the sacrifice that a man would make. A similar sacrifice. A, a mortal man sacrificing his only son to do something positive, that's a goddamn sacrifice, okay? That's a positive thing. A, a fucking all-powerful God who can do whatever the fuck it wants and has unimaginable power, there is no sacrifice. What am I, I'm supposed to be grateful that this thing that doesn't even know what sacrifice is, what it feels like, made one somehow, even though it can't? The story's fucking full of holes. Um, we also have... Um, Galatians chapter 2, verse 20, there's one for you. Um, Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 9. We have um, 1 John chapter 4, verses 9 to 11. And I could go on and on and on and on about all the fucking shit in the Bible that suggests this God loves its creation. And it is hard to imagine that all of this, the world we exist in, all the power this God allegedly has to get involved. This God simply won't. This God simply doesn't care enough. Right? So yeah, it is hard for me to believe that a loving parent figure would enjoy or have any sort of motivation that's based on love to let as much goddamn fucking suffering go on in the world as it does now. It's unfucking yeah. I I cannot accept that your God is a loving God. I can accept that if your God is real, he's a tyrannical fuck, and he just doesn't give a shit. I can accept that, but I won't accept that he actually gives a fuck about the people that he supposedly created. Right? That's that's what. Yeah, I do have trouble with that. You know, I I, I watch House a lot. House MD, and, and he's like the only mainstream. American television character who's sort of known for being an atheist, for lacking faith, who made it onto the Fox network. He's on, he's popular on television. And he said in one of those episodes, quote, either God does not exist or he's unimaginably cruel, unquote. And I, th I thought to myself, that's the best fucking way to explain this Christian God. Either this God that's being sold to me, the God that was sold to me in church, coming up as a child, the God that is sold to me on the signs in front of churches, the God that is sold to me on the billboards by pastors, this loving, caring, father figure God, either it doesn't exist or it doesn't give a fuck 
and it's unimaginably goddamn cruel. And those are the only two options. Period. And the bitch about it is, Reprieve, I, I think you know all of this. I, I think you know goddamn well that your God, this Christian God, is marketed in such a way. I think you know it. And I think it's really dishonest how you people go about pitching this God to society. At first, God loves you. God sacrificed, <laughs> sorry, sacrificed his only son so that the sin that he created you to commit would be forgiven and so he loves you. So God created the sin, created you to sin, knew you were going to sin, knew that that would somehow piss him off, right? He knew that. So he sacrificed, made some kind of sacrifice, even though he can't make a sacrifice because that's impossible. And his son had to get brutally tortured and crucified, more suffering, more despair, right? Um, so that we could still go to hell if we didn't follow the commandments. You see, this is how you market this stupid bullshit. But, the, but that's, not what, that's not what you hear in church, is it? That's not what you see on, on TV, Right? It's all about how God is loving and caring, and he cares about you. God is all merciful and compassionate. It's fucking bullshit. And then when people ask the hard questions, I saw Venom Fang X pull this same bullshit. When people ask the hard questions, well, what's with all the suffering? What's with all the shit? If God does intervene, why not get the shit, why not get the job done? Get the fucking job done intervene where it counts or you don't give a fuck well then you go well there's no verse in the bible that says that he's a that, that he cares and there'll never be any problems so uh, jokes on you well, what the fuck were you selling to me what the fuck were you selling to me when you told me that this god looked at me like a child like a caring father figure that was the product you were selling me i ask you why it doesn't work and your answer is well we never said god never said that <laughs> I mean, how fucking dishonest. Really. Really. <laughs> you know, it's it's like, um, I, I was watching Bruce Almighty the, the other day. You know, Morgan Freeman, Jim Carrey, and Jim Carrey gets God's powers. And the challenge, I, I stopped the movie at this point because the challenge was so absurd and people bought it. Fucking Americans are so goddamn dumb sometimes. The challenge was, oh, if you think you can do a better job than me, <laughs> go right ahead. <laughs> ten, ten minutes. I could do a better job than this Christian God given his power in ten fucking minutes. And I'd have nine minutes to spare to sit around on my ass and make fun little changes. Right? Ten, I, it would take me one minute to fix the world's problems given the power your God has. Yet this God, we're sold this God as a loving parent figure. And you wonder why people are confused, reprieve, when you make implications like the ones you made in that comment section? You wonder why people don't get it? People don't get it, reprieve, because it makes no fucking sense. Anyway, have a good evening. Peace.